This video will show you how to use Padlet.com as a way to collaborate and communicate between multiple computers, multiple devices, uh, especially in a classroom setting where students and teachers can put content on the Padlet wall and everyone in that group can access the materials, whether it's videos, pictures, uh, links, text, and this is especially useful if you have a one-to-one -one setting in your classroom where maybe most of the students or all of the students have access to a laptop, a netbook, it could be an iPad, an Android device, iPod touches even. It really doesn't matter what the technology gadget is, but Padlet is really useful for collaborating between those students and teacher and between the different devices and making it easy for students to turn in their work and share their thoughts. So let's take a look. Once you've signed up for a free Padlet account, all you have to do is click build a wall and it brings up a wall for you to customize. It tells you how to get started posting on your wall, but first I want to modify the wall. I'll click modify wall and I can title it and describe it. Let's say that this wall is going to be for my eighth grade language arts students. I can just type that in, type in a description of the wall and maybe what its purposes are going to be. Next I can click wallpaper and change the background, change the wallpaper of my wall. And You can see that there are various different patterns, designs for the background that you can choose. Notice that you can also add your own background if you want to upload an image or link to an image you could put in your own custom wallpaper. So I like that option a lot. Next up, let's look at layout. Layout options, you just have two. There's the freeform option where you can just put anything in just about any pattern you want. You have full control over where it goes, and so do the students or whoever you're collaborating with on this wall. The other option is to have things appear in a stream where posts are placed one below the other, kind of like in a threaded chat room or that kind of thing. I like freeform, I'm going to stick with that. Next up there are privacy options. Notice that you can keep your wall completely private or you can password protect it to make it especially protected and, and private. You can leave it just as a hidden link where it's a public wall, yes, but you have to be able to find it and with hidden link it's not going to show up in Google results or in public areas of Padlet. A fourth option is to make your Padlet wall totally public where you don't mind at all if the public finds it you're basically encouraging that. Other options that you have include adding people by email and you can give them more control if you do this. In fact you could basically add them as co-collaborators and, and managers of this wall along with you. This next option is pretty important for teachers. You can leave this checked which would make it so that you can moderate the posts that happen on your Padlet wall. If you're a little bit concerned that maybe some of your students might try to sabotage your wall, might put things that are inappropriate or irrelevant on your wall and just cause trouble, you might want to leave that checked to moderate the posts before things are added. I'm not going to do that for this, but it could be a, an excellent idea for many teachers and in many situations. Now before I submit this, one little note, notice that with some of these options you can adjust the options for what the viewer can do on your Padlet wall. So for example, right now with this hidden link option, the visitors to my site can write on the wall. They can post to the wall. If I don't want that, I can click and change it to just can view. Now they'll only be able to see the wall but not change it. And then a third option is can moderate, where basically they become co-moderators along with you. Anyone that visits this hidden link would be able to do that. I'm going to leave it at can write. So those are the privacy and visibility settings for my Padlet wall. And I'm going to stick with those. Now before I go on, I've decided I don't like this background. I'm going to go back to the wallpaper and switch just to the wood background. Just personal preference. But let's move on to notifications. You can see there's an option to check this box so that every day that someone posts something to my wall I will get an email once a day that will tell me what has changed about my wall. That's kind of nice. I think I'll stick with that. Next up this button gives me the link to my wall and you can see it's it's not ideal. So if I want to I can try to change that by clicking this little radial button and typing in my own URL ending and then notice it's available. I can click pick and my Padlet wall has changed to something much more easy to remember for my students and you know something more appropriate. Notice that there is uh, another button here, the delete button, that does allow me to delete my entire wall completely. I'm not going to do that at this time. So those are, the, those are your basic options for setting up a Padlet wall. Let's look now at how you can share this with students or colleagues or, or whomever. 
Notice that there's a share button here that you can click. It gives you ways to share on Google+, Facebook, all these different sites. It gives you options for just exporting your wall as an image, PDF, Excel spreadsheet, different items there. You can also subscribe or email or print it. And then one of my favorite options is this, embed. With this embed code, you can copy and paste that into Weebly or Blogger, unfortunately not Google Sites, but many other website creating tools, and it will pull this Padlet wall right onto your page. It's, it's a really great option. Notice at the bottom there's also a QR code that people can scan to take them to your Padlet wall. You could get this into a Microsoft Word document or a PowerPoint document simply by right-clicking on it, copy image and pasting it into Word or PowerPoint. So there's some great options for sharing it. Once you've done that, you're ready to start using your wall. And so are your students or anyone else that you've shared it with. So I can go ahead and just double click anywhere on this wall to create something. Maybe I want to create a question board for my students to leave questions for me. I can just double click. Notice it asks for name slash title post, but you don't have to put in name. Simply type in click away and you've just added text to the Padlet wall and I can click and drag to move that around. So now students that visit could just double click beneath the list of questions to add their question. Next up let's say maybe I want to leave an announcement for my students. I can click and add different announcements to the wall but you're not limited just to text. I can double click and upload an image. Notice the upload button. I can drag a file and drop it here or click to browse I can browse my computer. The image I pick will upload and appear on the site. Notice I can add a, a title if I want to. I can also click and drag to move the picture around. I can resize it by getting the corner and clicking and dragging. But I've just added a picture for my class to see or whoever I'm sharing this with. Now what if you don't have the picture on your computer that you want to upload? You can just double click and click this chain link button and then paste in the URL of an image or other item. So here's a picture on the web that I found. I can highlight it, copy it, copy the link, and paste it in, click add, and that web image is now included in my Padlet wall. And incidentally, that, that's an image that is marked reusable. I use the special Google search to find images that are marked as available for reuse. So I can move that picture around, I can use it, on my Padlet wall. Now that same feature works not just for pictures but it works for other items as well. So for example a Google map. I have here a map of Panama and I can just go up and copy the URL for the map, go back to Padlet, double click on the screen, click the link, paste in the link from Google Maps, click add and it's going to pull in a little thumbnail of my map. I can move it around, I can make it bigger and for the students, when they see this, they can click on the map and it will try to load it bigger for them. Sometimes it doesn't work, to be honest with you, but if you click this source tab, it will take them directly to the source and they'll be able to see the map large. So Padlet's pretty versatile about what you can add, especially if it's live on the web. You can just click that link button to link to it. Notice that it works. It says it works with images, maps, videos, slideshows, documents, or anything else it claims. You can also capture images from your webcam by clicking this. You can take a photo of yourself or anything that you put in front of the webcam. Now I'll show adding videos a little bit later but just know that clicking on this upload a file button I could pick a video that's on my computer and upload it in. I'm sure there are limitations on the size of the video, the length of the video, but just to be able to add those I think is really pretty cool. If there is a really large video that you're not able to load, I would recommend uploading it to YouTube or another similar site and then linking to it. And that's a great way to bring it into Padlet. So, you know, I'm liking Padlet so far, but if that's all Padlet did, I don't know if I would be as enthusiastic about it as I am. But fortunately, Padlet works absolutely great on mobile devices like iPads, Android devices, Windows tablets. It works well on just about everything. Let's take a look at how the experience would be on an iPad and how you can post things directly from the iPad onto the Padlet wall. So now let's look at the experience of using Padlet from the point of view of an iPad user. Here I am on the Padlet wall that was created earlier and using the, my finger I can double tap anywhere on the wall and it gives me a little your name post title pop-up. Similar to using a laptop or a desktop computer with Padlet I can tap that chain link button to pull in videos, maps, web links from the internet, but I can also tap the upload button and look what it does on an iPad. It says click to browse and I can tap 
on that and take a photo or video. If I choose that option, it takes me to my camera and I can take a photo or if I want to take a video, I can tap the use photo button. It uploads the photo or video to my Padlet wall and I've just added from my iPad a picture to the Padlet wall. Notice that if I switch back now to the laptop experience, you can see that the photo has been uploaded successfully and is accessible to the teacher or other students that also have access to the Padlet wall. Going back to the iPad now, let's take a look at the other option. If I double touch the background, upload, and then click to browse, in addition to taking a new photo or a new video, I can also choose existing. And this will access my camera roll or videos on my device, which I can then select and tap use. It does compress the videos, and I'm sure that there is a limit to the size of the video that you can upload. Once it's done uploading, your video is now available online. So switching back to the desktop view, you can see there's the video that was uploaded from my iPad. It's now available online on my Padlet wall. When it comes time to watch the video, all I have to do is click the play button. You do have to click this download file link and QuickTime will ask you for permission to run online. I'll say always run on this site and the video plays. When I'm done watching the video, I can click the X to go back. So Padlet becomes a wonderful way for students, teachers, colleagues to send files, send projects, turn them into the teacher, make them available for each other to view. And remember that as the teacher, you can moderate what's posted. You can make sure that it's appropriate and accurate and correct. So I hope you'll check out Padlet.com. I'm excited about it. I think it's a great tool. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to get access to all of my educational technology tutorials and videos.